Hello and welcome back to another guide for Xenonauts 2. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look into the ultimate guide to strategy layer, base building and money management. I am making a lot of concise, informative and accurate guides that are no BS, no repetition, just to the point. So let's jump into it and see what that topic offers. All right, first things first, in this guide, we're going to go over number one, the strategy layer, number two, the base and base design, base building, and number three, all things related to making money. The strategy layer is incredibly important in Xenonauts because you can lose the game by not correctly playing on it, or you can make the game so much harder on the technical layer than it needs to be. So when you are starting out the game, you will be prompted with a question where you want to place your base. You see three circles. Uh, the first circle indicates, or the smallest circle indicates one um, radar relay. The second one, two radar relays. And the third one, three radar relays. Anything um, beyond that will not improve the radar anymore. As you can see, your task at the beginning will be to cover as much land mass as possible. A little bit of a background here. Covering landmass will basically help you to prevent uh, the uh, panic in that specific region. So on the highest difficulty, you start with 50 plan panic overall. On the lowest, you start with 10 panic overall. Every activity that the aliens will do, bombing runs, assassinations, and you name it, will increase the local panic. There are only limited ways to reduce panic, so you got to choose wisely which means typically you want to set around uh, a base up around the equator. You can uh, theoretically do stupid stuff like putting it down here, but it will essentially result with you not uh, finding a lot of UFOs. The game divides the world into uh, six different uh, yeah, continents in the Xenonaut logic, not in the actual continent logic. North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, Soviet Union and Asia, which is basically that uh, entire uh, continent. So these six are your founding states. All of them will give you money, plenty thereof. Uh, to be fair, every single one around 400,000 give and take. So you don't want to screw up the relationship. You lose the game if you lose the connection to two of those states. What does that mean for, and you lose the connection by having a hundred or more panic in that region. So what does that effectively mean for placing the base? I would either suggest you take kind of uh, the Cuba location, which is around North and South America, uh, or you're taking a North African location, typically um, somewhere around here in Egypt, where you can, uh, with three radars, cover everything with the exception of Iceland, or you're going to take a base in Africa slash the Soviet Union. My experience, by the way, is that Australia, although it is a lot of land mass, uh, is effectively very small because uh, you can see it's typically uh, this map here is skewed towards uh, being larger in uh, being smaller in, in the middle, typically larger at the extreme um, uh, sides. Australia is an exception in that. Uh, typically, it would be much larger than that. Anyways, you're, uh, you would be good off with having a base here, here, or here. Let's go with the American uh, example. We're uh, this time going to take a Latin American base that will cover most of North America and South America. Now, as you have built up the base, let's jump into the um, actual other mechanics on, these, uh, on the strategy layer before we go into base building. What will happen over time is, as you progress in the scanning radius, there will be UFOs that are popping up. You essentially need to shoot them down. Small plug for the aerial combat guide that you can look um, up if you want to know how that works. And generally speaking, the str strategy layer here will require you at some points to build more bases so that you can cover all of the regions. An endgame scenario is typically you being um, fit with three bases, 
uh, to basically cover all of the six states and shut down as many U UFOs as you can. Keep in mind though, everything here costs upkeep. Upkeep will reduce your reg uh, regular income. So as you progress through the game, monetary problems will occur, which is why the third part of this uh, guide is focusing on money specifically. Other than that, the strategy layer is relatively straightforward. You want to make sure that you interrupt as much alien activity as you can. And as the time uh, goes by, you also will be prompted with individual uh, missions. There is one final thought around the strategy layer, which is the day-night uh, cycle. Night missions typically are more difficult than day missions, so if you can help yourself uh, hover around the target for a while before going into a mission, I personally prefer day missions. As aliens do not suffer night penalties, you, however, suffer quite a few, so you're actually just up in a disadvantage and disadvantageous position. So let's move into the base building next. Looking at the base building, you can have up to six bases, uh, which is kind of a pipe dream. You typically will not be that far in. Like I said, three bases would already be stretching it. And when you look at, uh, at the base, what is important is there is a summary of everything you need to know on the bottom left side. Shortly going through that, detection range uh, indicates how far you can detect. Defense strength is your actual defense um, of the base. When the base is being attacked, the hit points of a UFO determine uh, the value that you need to overcome. UFOs at the beginning come with around 100-150 hit points. UFOs at, uh, at the end, bombers have 550 hit points. So take that as a reference. There will always be a variance in the damage that you're dealing. So you will have something like 100 to 250 points of damage which means you want to upgrade um, the defensive structures as much as possible. If you shoot down a UFO before it uh, comes to the base, there, the UFO is basically lost and nothing happens. If the UFO penetrates your defenses, you need to defend your base, which brings us to the first point, the excess lift. Excess lift is where you will start when you have a, a base defense. Hangars is where the UFOs will start when uh, you do have a base defense. There are a couple of aliens though that will start in other parts of the base. So base defense is important. Next up, research speed. Uh, you do have a certain amount of uh, uh, scientists that will determine the research speed. The more scientists you have and the better laboratories you have, the more research speed you do have. Currently it is at 125%. That is the starting value. The same goes for engineers, vice versa, same value. If you build medical centers and we come to that, you will have two things. Number one, uh, an increased healing rate per day. Um, typically soldiers that have been wounded will require certain days of, uh, of uh, healing. And that increases with, better, uh, with a better medical equipment. And there is a survival chance on the highest difficulty, 0% on the lowest difficulty. I think it's 50% um, standard. And the medical uh, base essentially adds on top of it, a normal medical base 25%, the upgraded one 35%. So the survival chance is quite important since there is a high likelihood that you will lose soldiers or nearly use, uh, lose soldiers, so you want to have as much as possible. And finally, training centers. Training uh, rate determines the amount of um, progress points. Progress points kind of a hidden value behind uh, the um, uh, scenes. The more progress points you accumulate, the higher the stats uh, will um, will increase. Every single stat of a soldier requires a certain amount of progress point to go uh, forward. You start with four progress points. As you begin to capture and interrogate aliens, um, th this will rise up to 11 uh, pr uh, progress points uh, or 11 training rate at the end of uh, uh, the game. The training efficiency determines just how many training spots you do have available. If you have less training spots than the amount of soldiers in your base, they will rotate through, so they will take turns. Training rate is per day, so that means for 24 hours of training, the soldiers will get such and such amount of training uh, points. What does that mean in reality? If uh, you do have 11 training points later and you um, uh, purchase new uh, recruits, privates, it'll uh, take up to a month or two to get them to a decent level, captain um, and above, uh, where they can actually be useful. You can speed up this process by not only training them, but on top taking them to missions. But that already moves into the soldier guide, which I will do uh, later. So 
what do you want to do now and how is base um, strategy going to develop for you let's jump into that we're going through the uh, the buildings really quickly and i'll just show you what i would do on the highest difficulty each building does have a certain effect and an adjacency effect so you want to familiarize yourself with where every building is and then build them ac accurately and uh, already have in mind how the base should be structured let's start with those who have no adjacency hangers typically just exist uh, and will uh, carry one aircraft you can turn them around and put them wherever you want at the beginning you don't need a hanger second up the radar array has no adjacency bonus you can put them wherever you want uh, they are quite pricey but you want three of them so the beginning of the game what i would definitely do is i would build a second uh, radar array you can see we're now short on power which brings us to the next point generators generators have a certain um, capacity and an adjacency bonus so what we want to do is we want to build them um, immediately benefiting from the adjacency as you can see and in 12 days we are going to have more energy as well next up storage room at the beginning not needed later more important has an adjacency effect if you regularly sell stuff or are a bit organized then you will not need it that fast living quarters very important building where you're starting with almost four living quarters you want to expand that as soon as possible so i would definitely start with an additional living quarter you can also see living quarters have plus four living quarter bonus adjacency uh, and plus 10 effect immediately so we're um, 10 effect when they are uh, built next up laboratory research is ultra important at the beginning cannot stress that enough so i'm personally a big fan of building up laboratories even multiple laboratories in the future so i'm placing a laboratory here that means in 20 days we can start hiring five additional scientists to speed up the research i cannot stress enough how important it is to upgrade um, your laboratory space so that you can actually start getting better equipment workshops very similar there but i would do it later is um, on the low on the higher difficulty you are short on um, on funds let's move on to the really key items medical center uh, for one which is an absolute uh, critical item so we're immediately building that should be one of your first buildings actually always medical uh, center will improve the healing rate to 2.5 and will also improve the survival chance to 25 percent and then finally training centers um, the way that i would structure the base is radar relay radar radar um, maybe something else up here um, a solitary um, a solitary one those four can be um, generators we do have storage which could expand to here um, these four are living quarters this here could be a research cluster down here i'm typically building the uh, defense uh, systems which still leaves you with plenty of other space i.e down here i'm trying to leave a, du a duplex or two open for another hangar if i want a fourth hangar later in the game so training center equally important and has an adjacency effect so want to be careful that uh, that we can build that properly training center you can see you can only build it uh, somewhat adjacent to other buildings um, one uh, one thing that we uh, could do oh we first of all need more power my bad i mentioned it's quite power hungry so training center one thing that you could do is you could build it down here and basically have two training centers back to back which is what we're uh, what we're going to do um, you will have a lot of soldiers as the game progresses and you need the training center to just continuously upgrade them so that is the start and you can see funds are almost gone but this is how i would begin to do it general base building strategy months one two and maybe months three build up your main base the next expansions here would be upgrading uh, the um, the workshops further get another um, uh, get another uh, radar relay in 
make sure that you're researching and that that uh, starts to work well and then get at least three missile batteries and upgrade them uh, relatively soon so that your base is safe you don't want to need to defend them two training centers will be enough for 20 odd uh, soldiers so that is good you potentially will end up with four living uh, quarters two um, engineering quarters and three research that was a sweet spot that i found for myself maybe a fourth hangar here which essentially will uh, or down here which essentially will help you with your air superiority later in the game so that's really the base strategy and normal base building from month four onwards you want to branch out into base number two and base number three base number two and three i would recommend simply focusing on access lift three hangars um, three radars and um, a few generators plus missile batteries that's it you don't need any other rep uh, replicatory uh, stuff there no um, living quarters nothing all of that can be in your main base as typically your um, deployment ship will have enough distance to fly anywhere in the world good so moving on to the last problem which is making money so there are exactly three ways of making money in xenonauts and i will go through all three of them the most efficient uh, way is the regular funding you will get funding every 30 days 30 60 90 120 150 180 210 which is where the game is typically over so you can expect to have somewhat between six and seven influxes of money you're, you can see that, as I mentioned, uh, most of the regions will give you a certain amount of money um, between generally around 400,000, some more, some less. You don't want to lose any of them. This will be your main influx for progressing the game further. What I've always done is during the period of the 30 days, thought well in advance what are the next more important things that i need because i will get an influx between 1.5 and 2 million dollars uh, on lower difficulties more but the money problems specifically on higher difficulties become quite prevalent you can get more money from these regions if you're reducing the panic so whenever you do have an option to reduce panic do that panic reductions typically come from abduction missions from cleaner cell uh, missions, so redu reduction of cleaning and uh, prevention of terror attacks. Those are the main uh, methods of, uh, of reducing panic and you want to make sure that you keep it somewhat stable. So that is option number one and will be your main um, income source. Make sure that you delay certain continuous spending because you do have expense, um, expense reports and the majority will be your personal upkeep. Keep that in mind. If you want to hire scientists, don't do that prior to the funding report. Do that at the beginning of the month so that you can have the maximum value of them. So that will be number one. Number two, in order to make money, is effectively selling things. And the selling mechanic is an interesting one because um, items will go for a certain value for the first time that you sell them and then that value drops. So say we're selling a Defender Armor now for $5,000, uh, uh, $5, you will see that now the value has dropped to $4,500 and it will continuously go down as the market saturates. So that means if you need to sell stuff, sell big and sell one time instead of gradually selling over time. In terms of uh, important items that you might not want uh, to sell, the, the Elarium and the Alien Alloys are typically off the table you need them for so many productions so you want to be mindful of that however there is a little trick that you can do in order to generate more money living specimen of aliens go for incredible high amounts of money 20,000 each um, data typically goes for a lot uh, so if you can get cleaner data or if you can get a living specimen use them and uh, sell them if a ufo lands later and you do have items such as the stun baton or stun guns try to stun as many of uh, the aliens as possible without putting your soldiers into jeopardy because then you can sell them and they go for 20k a pop which means you can easily later in the game get between 500,000 and a million every single month 
from just selling items that you do not need. So that is option number two, which neatly brings us to option number three of generating money, which is actually through certain missions. These are rare, far and uh, few between. So you definitely would want to look out for them. Sometimes uh, they are cleaner missions. So typically they are story missions. The cleaners are the advent of uh, Xenonaut. So they are the, an organization that works together with the aliens. You want to disrupt their operations. They do have data. You can steal that data and then sell the data for a hefty price at uh, the black market. And that's it. So that is all you get as income options. Technically, there is a last one, which is whenever you shoot down a UFO, you can um, grant salvage rights to uh, the local authorities, which gives you an immediate influx of money. But make no mistake, you're better off just going there, training your soldiers, getting training points uh, as, as part of that, so progress points, and then just selling all of the stuff that you looted, which will typically be much more than you would get. Money is tight in the game, so you want to be really, really careful to not overdo it and not overspend. But I hope that the tips that I've given you, specifically capture a live specimen and then sell them uh, later and sell once, uh, sell a big plus plan ahead and don't incur too many ongoing costs, that that will bring you through the game. That's it. That was the guide for strategy and everything related base management. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, I have a full selection of guides available and uh, hope to see you soon within Xenonauts 2. Take care and have a good one, guys. Bye bye.